Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting differential equation. We have y double prime equals y times y prime, and we're going to be solving for five values. Now, why is this equation interesting? You might be asking, right? Well, first of all, notice that we have a nonlinear equation. Y is being multiplied by its derivative. That kind of makes it nonlinear, and it's equal to the second derivative. There's another reason why this equation is interesting. Well, I forgot the second reason. Sorry about that. Anyways, how do you approach an equation like this? Well, if I didn't have y in this equation, for example, suppose I had something like y double prime equals x times y prime, then I could use substitution, right? Like set y prime equal to u, and then y double prime would be u prime, and then we'll get u prime equals x times u. And this is a separable differential equation, which is fairly easy to solve, right? Okay, but we don't have that. We have y, y prime, and y double prime. So we have everything. So let's go ahead and ignore y prime first. Now think about y is the derivative of what? Then if you don't know, think about 2y. You got it? So for example, differentiate y squared, and you get 2y, right? Really? No, you don't. Something is missing. What is that? Yes, it's the good old chain rule. So if you differentiate y squared, you don't just get 2y because, remember, we're differentiating with respect to x and y is a function of x, which means y can be expressed in terms of x, but we don't know what it is. It could be 2x, it could be x cubed, it could be e to the x, it could be cosine x, whatever. So when you differentiate y as a function of x, you get 2y, and then you must multiply by y prime because of chain rule. Well, that's good, okay? Now, how is that gonna help us though? Notice that we got y times y prime here, and that's exactly what we have on the right-hand side. So what does that mean? Well, it just means that if we divide both sides by two, then, the derivative of y squared divided by 2 becomes y times y prime. Great. So let's go ahead and save this. And now we are going to look at the left-hand side. This is the right-hand side. What is the left-hand side? y double prime. And notice that y double prime can be expressed as the derivative of y prime because that's the definition of the second derivative it is the derivative of the first derivative, right? Great, so now we have everything we need. Let's put, put it all together. Okay, great. Now, on the left-hand side, we have y double prime, which is the derivative of y prime. And the right-hand side is y times y prime, which is this. So I'm gonna write it as the derivative of y squared divided by two. Okay, great. I mean, maybe not so great, how do you, where do you go from here, right? So first of all, let's go ahead and multiply both sides by two, even though you don't have to. It just makes it a little easier. You get rid of the fraction. And let's go ahead and put this expression on the left-hand side. So switch sides and multiply by two. You get the derivative of y squared equals two times the derivative of the derivative of y, or just the derivative of y prime. Make sense? Great. Now, why is this so good? because we could integrate or anti-differentiate both sides, right? When we do, we basically get rid of all the derivatives because the integral of the derivative of something is that thing, right? Well, with a tiny difference, we have a tiny constant we have to take care of. And we'll talk about that, don't worry about it for now. So when you integrate the left-hand side, it's just gonna give you y squared, okay? And the right-hand side is, by the way, when you have a constant, we can use the constant rule. So in other words, if you have a constant C multiplied by a function of F, I mean, a function of X like F, then it just becomes C times F prime. When you integrate, the same rule applies. That's why you're allowed to take out the C. And the good reason behind that is integrals are summations, but with infinitely pieces. Okay, we have this infinitesimal, dx, dy, whatever. Anyways, that's a long story. We're going to skip that one for now and continue with our expression. So 
This is what I was trying to say. To keep a long story short, this two will stay and you'll just integrate y prime, the derivative of y prime, which is gonna give you y prime. Awesome, that's really cool, right? It's a lot simpler than what we started with. First of all, this is, I was gonna say nonlinear, but I think it's still, well, I was gonna say linear, but it's still nonlinear because we have y squared, but that can be easily taken care of. How? You can just square root both sides, right? Okay, great. Let's see how we can proceed with that. So, first of all, uh, we get to y prime, but one thing we should not forget is the constant, right? The reason why we have to add a constant is because we are looking at integrating this, and yes, one of the antiderivatives of this expression is 2y prime, but we have to consider all the antiderivatives. Now, if c does not equal zero, then we are cooked, okay? I'll show you how that works though, but let's go ahead and take a look at the simpler case. If c is equal to zero, then we're in good shape because we get y squared equals two times y prime. And guess what? This can be easily solved. You know why? Because it's separable. Let's take a look. So now we can go ahead and write the y prime as dy over dx, which is what it is, right? The derivative of y with respect to x. And then we can actually go ahead and put the y squared on the right hand side and write this as follows. dy over y squared equals dx over two. You can leave the two anywhere, it doesn't matter, Don't, no big deal. I guess you could probably leave it here as well. So just leave the two there with the dy, just multiply by dx, divide by y squared, cross multiply, whatever. Some people say, oh, you can't multiply both sides. Well, you can, too bad, right? Okay, get used to it. Now we're gonna go ahead and integrate both sides, and when we do, something miraculous is gonna happen because we're gonna get the following. Now, what is the integral of two over y squared? Or in other words, what about integrating one over y squared? Well, if you think about the derivative of one over x, it's negative one over x squared. So if you integrate one over x squared, you should be getting negative one over x plus the constant, right? Let's not write the constant now. But this is one over y squared. Do we have to use chain rule? No, because you have dy. You see, the integration is with respect to y. So this becomes negative two over y. Get the idea? And that is equal to x plus a constant. Which constant should we use? K, because you already use c. You can't use it again, right? So now, from here, let's try to f solve for y. Easy, cross cancel, cross cross applesauce. You're gonna get y equals negative two divided by x plus k, where k is a constant. Great, so for c equals zero, we get a nice solution. Okay, let's now talk about what happens if c does not equal zero. Are we really cooked? No, not really. No big deal, I'll show you how to do it. Maybe just a method, huh? Not the whole thing. You can do the rest, hopefully. Okay, if um, we c is not equal to zero, then we get the same equation with a tiny difference. We have to add the constant. So it's gonna look like this. Two dy over dx is equal to uh, y squared Actually, let me write the original so you can see where I'm coming from. So if c does not equal zero, we get y squared equals 2y prime plus c. And then I'm gonna go ahead and subtract c from both sides, and then maybe put the 2y prime on the other side, so switch sides. And then notice that uh, y prime is dy over dx. I think this is more understandable, right? And then now let's go ahead and separate the variables. Put the dy here with the c square, y squared over c, and that's equal to, uh, well, I guess I could leave the two there and put the dx by itself. And now if you go ahead and integrate, you're gonna get something interesting because now we need to integrate, yes, we can take out the two, but we still have to integrate one over y squared minus c. And this is x plus another constant. You can call that m, I guess, doesn't matter. But how do you integrate this? Okay, let me show you how to integrate, and maybe you can do the rest, right? Because that shouldn't be too hard. So here's what you can do. In addition to, like, you can do partial fractions, like factor this into this. I don't think that's the best way to do it, but you know, like this. And then you can kind of find the coefficients from here. This is called partial fractions. 
You can find A and B and integrate each one of these, which is ln and ln, easy. Or you can do trigonometric substitution, which is my favorite, by the way. You can replace y with square root of c times secant theta. And the reason why we use secant is because when we replace y with that, you're going to get, uh, so here's what y squared minus c is going to turn into. It's going to be c times secant squared, and then you're going to subtract c from it. And when you factor out c, you'll get secant squared minus 1, which is tangent squared. So that's going to give you something nice. But you also have to consider dy, and dy is going to be the derivative of secant, which is secant times tangent. But guess what? You can do the rest, right? So I trust you on that one. Because this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.